Hi, and thanks for listening to Gossip with Celebrity, brought to you by Celebrity.com. This week, we talk about the Royals, Leah Michelle, and Thomas Middleditch. Our user feedback is from someone who listened to all of our podcasts, and we end with our weekly feature, The Comments of the Week. The stories, photos, and tweets we talk about can be found at Celebrity.com slash podcast under episode 54. Hi, I'm Katie, the founder and editor of Celebrity.com, and I write as Celebrity. And I'm Chandra, I'm the head writer for Celebrity, and I write as Kaiser. So it's been a really tough week for a lot of people, and it's been hard to watch the news, it's been hard to read Twitter. You know, we're safe in our homes, and we're not facing this every day, but I've been crying like half the day today. It just hit me today, finally. I was crying over the weekend, and then I was really upset on Monday when oh, when Trump ordered those kids gassed in Lafayette Park. But then it felt like everything started to not get better after that. It just, people started fighting back. It felt like the mood changed after that moment of sheer assholery from the president or from Trump, you know, it was like everyone just came together and said, oh, holy shit, we don't want to be like that. We don't want to be this authoritarian dictatorship. We don't want the military to shut down free speech. We don't want that. And so that's made me feel a lot better is that that was the moment when people chose a side. Yeah, it it feels like things are changing. And but I hope it doesn't get worse for everybody. And it's it's still happening. I read this account on Twitter of New York City last night and how, I mean, this kid described how it's like Hunger Games there. Yeah. There's big signs saying curfew is eight and the cops are fucking toying with people, just like we heard in, in Washington. Yeah. They're not letting them go home. They're trying to trick them. They're trying to corral them. It's called kettling. And so they can get more arrests. It's despicable. And Bill de Blasio is just fucking things up utterly i've been reading just how Mm -hmm. ineffectual he is and i trusted cuomo on covid yeah on covid but i don't trust him on this no i just wish that new york leaders weren't in the pocket of big police their police force is notoriously corrupt and racist yep but yeah i've been feeling overstimulated with all the social media stuff because so much stuff is breaking in the afternoons and evenings, and I just can't keep, like, I'm finding it hard to work and, yeah, write through things, and anyway. But from my perspective, just watching you, you're always productive. I don't know how you do it, because I start to get really scattered and have a hard time focusing. Well, it's been like that for me this week, of just not being able to focus, wanting to see what is happening. Anyway. anyway. Last week, we had the call to action where we asked if you gave us a review, you could send it to me and I would Zoom with anybody. And Diane sent me her review and I told her that we're going to give away Amazon gift certificates this week and did she want one and she didn't. So thank you, Diane. (laughs) She was really nice. She says she gives us five star reviews every week. So if anybody um, sends us a review this week, we're going to give away two $25 Amazon gift certificates to the first two people. So this week we had. Let's just talk about first Megan's really powerful commencement speech that she gave for her alma mater, Immaculate Heart High School in L.A. It was amazing. Yeah, it was great. And do you want me to tell a little backstory on this? Because I had an entirely different post written up to go up this morning, and then I had to rewrite it completely because the Daily Mail had written this story about why hasn't Megan said anything about Black Lives Matter? I wrote this story where I was like going off about she doesn't need to say anything and, you know, get out of her business. Yeah. She's the victim of these racist attacks and she has been the victim for a very long time. And then like she comes out with the video and I'm like, oh, shit. Now I got to take all that back. <laughs> you can quickly edit that. The Daily Mail is pissed now because they can't bash her for fucking four weeks for Darren to make a statement. Well, and you know, they want to. You know, they probably still will. <laughs> I'm sure they'll, they have, you know, four weeks planned of bashing her for being black and for saying something about black lives mattering. 
but yeah um <laughs> like i just thought that was funny that she stepped on that story within 24 hours and i'm sure she didn't plan it that no. way you know she of course probably had that like weeks plan how utterly powerful and heartfelt was that speech oh it was beautiful that's at the level of any politician you know that is as good of a speech as i've seen anybody ever make because it you could tell it meant something to her she wasn't performative not that i don't mean to nitpick no just, i understand because me. sometimes she is yeah. sometimes you can tell she's an actress and i mean that in a really nice way that you can tell that she knows how to speak publicly that she knows how to give a speech that she's very comfortable in front of a microphone and those are not bad qualities those are great qualities and qualities somebody with that position should work on <laughs> you know what i'm saying do you mind if i play this clip now yeah uh, go ahead yeah so this is a clip from our zoom meeting from our last zoom meeting and we talked about this before megan's speech came out so it means even more now it starts with Rhiannon. She's the one who loves Ben Affleck. She's talking about <laughs> how she wanted to like Kate, but she just disappoints her. I used to love Kate when she first got married because I drank the Kool-Aid. You know, she waited so long. She was perfect, whatever. My biggest frustration with her is you're a college-educated woman. You have such a platform. Speak. Use it. it. It just, as time went on, I just got so disappointed because I'm like, you're truly the 21st century princess and you're doing not a thing with it. You're just literally mimicking William and every single engagement you go to. But she basically went to college for her MRS. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. I went and and nothing her, else. Speech, I mean, she yeah. was giving a speech. It was so horrible. He, <laughs> they even put the camera on William where he even looked away and was like shaking his head. I mean, she just does not articulate well when she speaks. Megan who can just go deliver a full speech without a piece of paper. Megan went to college for college. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's so true. And we just heard Megan's speech just proving it over and over. Yeah. You know, she went to college. She's highly trained. And she went to college for college. Well, as <laughs> Ashley said, you know, Kate went to college for her MRS. Yeah. And I always think about that story that someone told on Jezebel about Kate cheating her way through university. And, like, just how vapid she was even back then. Like, she just had her eye on William. That's all she cared about. That was in the comments, so we can't verify that, but it's probably true. Yeah, we have no idea if it's true, but it's true. <laughs> <laughs> Something I really liked about Megan's video was that she talked about her own childhood of growing up in L.A. Yeah. during the riots and how that... Yeah affected her so much and you could tell that she's been dealing with that over the past week of seeing an, another african-american man who is brutalized and this time he's killed and thinking about rodney king and what happened after yeah. those cops were acquitted yeah no i i know what you mean and she referenced the tree the tree that was just burnt down by her house and how that was a symbol for her I really liked what she said, too, about how her teacher told her to always always remember to put others' needs above your own fears. So she brought it back to the school. That was masterful because it was a commencement speech for her school. And she remembered the teacher's name. She remembered the exact quote. So here's a segment from Megan's speech where she talks about all the black people who have been murdered by the police. She doesn't say that exactly, but here's that section. The only wrong thing to say is to say nothing. Because George Floyd's life mattered and Breonna Taylor's life mattered and Philando Castile's life mattered and Tamir Rice's life mattered. And so did so many other people whose names we know and whose names we do not know. Stefan Clark, his life mattered. I mean, that's a powerful statement. And that was what Barack Obama was saying in his presidential address on the same day that Meghan gave hers, which was that both she and Obama were speaking to black kids saying your life matters, your dreams matter. The fact that you're scared, that matters, too. Yeah. All right. Well, the only thing that is getting me through the past few weeks um, 
is this Duchess of Cambridge Tatler story. And it's like the perfect <laughs> anecdote in case you need something to just tur- switch your brain off and not think about how everything is burning in the world. Focus on this stupid, absolutely delicious <laughs> gossip because it keeps on giving. So we had <laughs> some denials from the Cambridges when we recorded the podcast last, but more came out. And <laughs> so my favorite one was in Vanity Fair by Katie Nichol. What do you call her? What's that word? Hagiographer? Yeah, hagiographer is someone who writes about the saints. Ooh. I'm referencing the fact that Katie Nichol has practically canonized Kate. I like how you use big words, but you don't use them all the time. Just like when they're good and they pack a punch. You know, you're not a pretentious writer. Thank you. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, so Katie Nichol, (laughs) she's obviously got sources deep within the Middleton camp. And so it was so obviously a plant that the Cambridge people went to Katie Nichol at Vanity Fair. And yeah, go ahead. You wanted to talk about this part. (laughs) So like the last story about Kate doing her duty for the nation, but no, she doesn't resent it. She's working so hard. Yeah, she works as hard as a top CEO. (laughs) (laughs) And but she has so much resentment about having to work as hard as a top CEO. Don't forget. But she doesn't because she understands that people are working harder. (laughs) Mm -hmm. This story in the Vanity Fair was hilarious. So I'm going to read a segment from that. This is the sourced story. She has really been enjoying the early years work and has found her stride and purpose. She sees this work as a lifelong commitment and she has worked really hard on this campaign. It's the suggestion that she resents her duty and hard work which has upset her. She takes her role very seriously and has been working harder than ever. The idea she feels trapped and exhausted simply isn't the case. Mm -hmm. The early years, the struggle survey. The struggle survey. So this was what I mentioned in last week's podcast. I was like, whatever happened to the poor struggle survey? These five pathetic little questions about child rearing. And don't worry, you know, Kate, who works as hard as a top CEO, she's going to return to the struggle survey in a few months after she, you know, (laughs) spends the summer, quote unquote, in lockdown, which probably means on vacation somewhere. We'll get a couple pictures of her kids. Yeah. And then the Times of London, (laughs) you reported on this, they did analysis and found that the numbers for the Cambridges are the same, even though they're home and they could be clocking up more numbers with more Zoom calls or whatever, or just sending little notes yeah i mean i like that the times of london ran the numbers and figured out that they're working at the same basic rate but they totally bungled megan's numbers so now i don't know what their point was they said that megan had only done one event please where do you think they're getting megan's numbers from Probably from the same guy who compiles Will and Kate's numbers, the same guy who does That's what I'm saying. Yeah, the numbers for everybody else. I just think that they don't want Megan's events to count officially for some reason, and I don't understand why. (laughs) You know why. (laughs) Just to make Will and Kate look better, but... They're so petty, they're trying to get more bot followers. I mean... Yeah. But the the guy who does the numbers is supposed to be somewhat independent. I don't know if that's true, but... It's not true. <laughs> so we also heard that the Cambridges were understood to be taking legal action against Tatler magazine, which means that they might have sent some threatening letters, but they're not going to do shit, just like yeah. William didn't do anything about the Hanbury's. It, it was country. fascinating to see that because... The Daily Mail, they were very careful with their language. The Emily Andrews of the Daily Mail, she broke the story. And she was like, they're threatening legal action. And then a few lines down, they sent a letter. And (laughs) everyone, like so many sites ran. They're suing Tatler. Will and Kate are suing Tatler. They have filed a lawsuit. No. They had their lawyers send a bitchy letter to Richard Denon saying you better take down this story and that's all (laughs) that's all they want (laughs) they want him to take down the story because they have no idea how any of this works well tatler like they took the links to the story down from their front page and from their royal section right but it's still accessible yeah 
And even if not, it's the internet. Everybody's already duped that article, especially given how high profile it was. Yep, I did. I have it in our archives. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks. Uh, and then they tried to blame Megan for the article, as if Kate wasn't friends with the editor. <laughs> this is the funniest part to me. Is I mean, it was so obvious that they would eventually find a way to bring it around to Megan. It happened. It happened so quickly. <laughs> so who Anna Pasternak is the author of this. Right. She's friends with ex-tattler journalist Vanessa Mulrooney, the sister-in-law of Megan's best friend, Jessica Mulrooney. Yeah. So how much of a degree <laughs> of separation is that? So Megan has a friend whose sister-in-law used to work with somebody who wrote the article. Okay. Right. And worked with her like 20 years ago, I think. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the connection. That's why Megan is to blame for this whole Tatler debacle. It doesn't have anything to do with the fact that Kate is friends with the editor in chief and that they went to university together or that all of her rich bitch aristocratic friends in Norfolk saw an opportunity to put Kate in her place. Of course, it's not that. It has to be Megan. Yeah, it's Megan's fault. Yeah, it's just outrageous. <laughs> it's outrageous. And there's continued articles blaming Megan and talking about how hurt and upset Kate is. And this is the one piece of negative press that she's gotten. Well, the first piece of negative press that she's gotten in like four years. I want to say like four years. What um, incident are you thinking about four years ago? I mean, I'm just going off memory. But it was around 2015, 2016, before Meghan came onto the scene, when there was a lot of chatter from the royal Rhoda about how lazy Will and Kate were. Oh. Oh, remember their India trip and how badly they fucked it up with oh, the yeah. media and all that? That was all happening about six months before Meghan came around. Okay. So, yeah, I overstated by saying, but it's been a long time since there's been negative coverage of Kate, and it's always been much milder than Megan has gotten. Right. So it's pretty ripe, ripe that she's freaking out over this <laughs> one article. All they had to do was keep quiet. If they kept quiet, they would have looked like they don't care and they're unbothered. Instead, they nitpicked the shit out of it in multiple response articles. Yes, yeah, if they had just let it sit there. I think most of the media outlets probably just would have gone with the most negative quotes about Megan. They would have focused on the tights of the wedding. You know, yeah. they would have just focused on that and maybe done a few pieces here and there about, you know, how William is obsessed with Carol and all that stuff. <laughs> that would have been a three day news cycle. Yeah, That's about it. that. If they didn't respond with multiple <laughs> articles to every point, then... And it's just so clear that William is stomping his feet and that Kate is, like, calling up lawyers and doing the most to, like, disassociate herself from everything in it. It's She really... has to work so hard now <laughs> to refute this one story. I know. This is probably going to count as a royal engagement for her all these times that she's had to talk to the lawyers and issue statements via the press secretary. Oh, she works so hard. She does. So this week, Leah Michelle got exposed for the racist bitch that she is and the demanding <laughs> asshole that she is. Well, and I always thought her personality was somewhat of a put on. And it's not. And she is that bad. I always got a bad vibe from her. I remember years ago writing some pieces about how <laughs> she just came across as like a total fucking pill. And you're like, you, you have wrote, to stop I made you take it off. <laughs> you said you wanted to smack her in the face. And I was like, you can't write that. You said she had a smackable face. I remember that. That was like six years ago or more. And I was like, girl, you can't write it like that. And, when, yeah. Oh, my God. But that's she the does. thing. You always have that radar about people. And you see it like years and years before. And I'm like, no, they're OK. They're fine. But you can't say that until everybody else gets on board. You know, like you have to wait. You were like that with Kate, too. But I mean, I had a really bad vibe about Leah, but. I never thought that she was, like, the bitch who was threatening to shit in people's wigs. <laughs> like, that That's story terrible. is just bonkers. She's a terrible person. But I have to say that 
even though her sponsor dropped her, HelloFresh dropped her. Yeah, he- HelloFresh. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> so even though HelloFresh dropped her and specifically said that it was because they don't condone racism, like everyone, all of her former co stars are now saying, actually, we don't think she's a racist. We just think she's a terrible fucking person. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, she's terrible to everybody white people, black people, brown people. She just hates everybody. Well, she threatens to I shit in people... everybody's wigs. <laughs> <laughs> I think both white and black people are afraid to call her racist because, you know, white people just defend. And then. Black people can't be like, oh, she's racist, because then it puts a target on them. Do you know what I mean? So I think it's hard for people to call her racist. I was just writing about Amber Riley, and I think if Amber Riley yeah. thought that Leah was racist, she would say so. If you go back to what Samantha Ware was saying, she didn't use the word racist either. She just said microaggressions, and it, ultimately it doesn't matter because Leah is a terrible person. Like, who really cares about her motivations if? She's doing it because she's just terrible or if she's doing it because she's a racist. Who knows? I'm sure she's both. <laughs> like, that's the thing. And a lot of people specifically said that she was bad to them. Yeah. Here's Leah's apology in, like, huge air quotes. <laughs> <laughs> the responses I received to what I posted have made me so... Okay, I'm going to restart. The responses I received <laughs> sorry, to what I, I posted... <laughs> have made me also focus specifically on how my own behavior toward fellow cast members was perceived by them. While I don't remember ever making this specific statement, and I have never judged others by their background or color of their skin, that's not really the point. What matters is that I clearly acted in ways which hurt other people. Whether it was my privileged position and perspective that caused me to be perceived as insensitive or inappropriate at times, or whether it was just my immaturity and me being just unnecessarily difficult, I apologize for my behavior and for any pain which I have caused. Mm -hmm. So she kept saying perceived, like other people's interpretation of her was to blame, not her being a terrible person. Right. She couldn't even get that right. (laughs) She could have said, oh... It's just the way you're perceiving me. I'm just a terrible person, you know, whatever. It's, it is just you. It's just your perception of me. But instead yeah. she's like, I was behaving terribly and you perceived me behaving terribly. Yeah. <laughs> it was weird. And I liked how Samantha Ware just said perceived a million times in her <laughs> tweet about it. So here's that clip from Zoom. It starts with my friend Karen saying that Ryan Murphy and the Glee producers are complicit because that's Mm -hmm. a big point, too, that people allow this behavior to continue. What makes me angry is the fact that, you know, she was allowed to act this way. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure people complained about her and they just let her do whatever she wanted because she was a star of the show and, yes, she's talented. Mm -hmm. So, but I mean, that's, I I put that on Ryan Murphy. I put that on all the other producers, directors that just let that behavior run rampant. I mean, calling women cockroaches. Yeah. Just a, just a, just a despicable. Ryan Murphy likes that though. Well, Because he still has Emma Roberts on his shows. Well, and then remember Naya Rivera talked about Leah and then everyone just threw her off the island. And they yeah. thought she was just bitter and whatever. So I'm sure oh, Naya Rivera gonna... is bitter and crazy. Yes, she is. Well, don't, she is. don't take but that she away. She can, you can be right and she be wrong. wrong. <laughs> and that's what yeah. she is. So it's also true that Emma Roberts has been consistently employed by Ryan Murphy. Yes. I think that's very true. I think with all this Leah Michelle shit, wig shit, I think that... Uh, i'm sorry i really like to say it and i can't believe that she actually threatened that i'm obsessed with it um (laughs) who even thinks like that who would use their own feces in a little disgusting so i Uh. also get a creepy feeling about ryan murphy i've never been able to put my finger on it i never have but i don't like him And I think he's a bad producer, and I think he's a bad creator. And I think he tolerates this abhorrent behavior from people like Leah Michelle and Emma Roberts. And I think he's complicit in that. 
Oh, Boom. That's a whole nother thing. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't have to make the mic drop sound. Um, <laughs> his shows are good for a few episodes and then they get too stupid and crazy. Yeah. I, but I don't think he's yeah. good at his job. And I don't understand why people keep giving him money to crazy money to do all of these bad shows. Yeah. I don't get it. I liked Hollywood, but I only saw a couple episodes of it. Like, that's when I lose interest in his shows is after a few episodes or a season. But that's true for a lot of shows. Those type of shows that throw everything at you at once are popular. Yeah. Not to me. So, so we also got... This week, we heard that Thomas Middleditch's wife filed for divorce. We talked about him in a, another podcast last year. Number 30. I looked it up. So I'm just going to replay what we said about <laughs> yeah. All right. That's fine with me. We've never been able to use our old content before so effectively. I've never played a segment from another thing of us talking. So let's just replay that where we talked about whatever. I don't have to set it up because I set it up in the thing. Okay. <laughs> He told Playboy that he's a swinger, which, okay, you know, you do you, but it does not sound like swinging. He has been married since 2015. He's 37. His wife, Molly, is a costume designer. He admitted that he only told her he wanted to quote unquote swing, which is, this is not swinging, but he wanted to sleep with other people, but he only told her about it after they were married. He said they argue about it constantly. These are his words. Mm -hmm. And he tries to negotiate when he wants to hook up with other women. It is not swinging. It is not open marriage or polyamory. That's just one dude being like, I'm gonna cheat and you're either okay with it or I leave you. If I was being really generous, I would say <laughs> that maybe they are swingers and he just didn't explain it right. No. <laughs> yeah, like that's the best possible option is that like he didn't want to talk about how she swings as well. Okay, yeah. But the way he made it sound, like his actual words to Playboy were that it very much sounded like he decided that he wanted to keep screwing other women <laughs> even after they were married and she just has to deal with it. And that's not swinging. Yeah, it's just having a one-sided open marriage. Ugh. And he also admitted that she didn't want him talking about it. And he still talked about it. <laughs> That's not cool. He's, oh, it's awful. So, All right, so yeah, I just, I yeah. think it's a good thing. <laughs> I'm glad that she left him and I want to buy that poor woman a drink because he sounds like such a fucking douchebag. Yeah. And you think if you marry a guy. <laughs> no, like I know that. where you're going with this. Okay. <laughs> He's not a real prize. <laughs> you know, he's got a good job, but that's about it. You think if you marry somebody like that, they'll at least be faithful to you. Did you ever watch Silicon Valley? Oh, yeah. I watched the first couple of seasons. Yeah, like he's got an appeal. I can understand no. why certain mm -mm. kinds of women were like, oh, he's mm -mm. kind of nerdy hot. <laughs> but as soon as that Playboy interview came out, I was like, "Ooh, God, this man is I disgusting. would never go for him. Mm -mm. He wasn't my type even before I knew that about him, but yeah. I don't mind a nerdy hot guy, but he sounds mm. like such a douchebag. He's gross. Speaking of, I have to let Rhiannon defend herself for liking Ben Affleck because she talked about that on the Zoom this week. We got a new person who agrees with her, Colleen. So here's that clip. <laughs> my name is Rhiannon and I love Ben Affleck. And even on the podcast, I got dragged for it, but that's all right. He's still my baby. I, I choose my choice and I stand by it. He's really hot. It's, it's tough. Thank you. Hey. I like you. I like you. Thank you. I'm old. You and I were old people. And we remember Ben I'm Affleck than you. when he was cute, when he was a hot guy. He used to be hot. Yeah. He used to be hot. Circa 99. Yeah. yeah. I was more into Matt Damon back then, but Ben Affleck has an appeal 20 years ago. At this point, yeah. he does not. At this point, it's disgusting. <laughs> no, he's gross. <laughs> the back tattoo and all the Botox oh. and just the meatiness. Oh. The <laughs> yeah. And it's not his size, it's how he carries it. Do you know what I it's mean? It's his body, like, all of a sudden, it's <laughs> all, like, steroidy, and it's all up top. <laughs> oh, 
It's gross. <laughs> Steroidy, like a chicken, like a overstuffed chicken. It is. <laughs> All right, let's move on to the user feedback. So on last week's podcast post, William Jolene commented, thank you. After visiting CB for 15 years, just caught up with the podcasts. <laughs> so, so enjoyable. Can listen to them over and over. I'm amazed you have the time and capacity to make them as well as usual. Awesome content. Um, Somebody listened to every single thing that we did. Oh my god! Thank you. Thank you. Holy shit! <laughs> well, everyone's got to binge something during lockdown, and you know, for me, it was Hannibal yeah. and Bones. For other people, it's Gossip with Silla Bitchy. Thank you. I can't believe they did that, but okay, I'll take it. I'm very flattered that we were that entertaining. Sometimes we can't even listen to ourselves. Oh, can I talk about Hannibal for a second? Since I mentioned it. Sure. <laughs> Since I brought it up, <laughs> let me talk about it. Okay. Go um, ahead. So I finished Hannibal, the all three seasons. Oh my fucking god, was that terrible? I hated it. <laughs> I can't. No, we cannot even talk about it anymore because it was so bad what they did. Anyway, we can move on. Okay, now. so you're not gonna give spoilers, <laughs> so other people can. Go through what you went through. You can write about it if you want. I don't care. Find an excuse to complain. It ended years ago, and I just, I found it, and I was like, well, maybe I'll like this. And I did like it for, like, a few hours. Then I was just hate watching it, because it was so stupid. And it was also misogynistic. Okay. Ugh. Anyway. Oh, I hate when that happens. And that's part of the reason I gave up on Silicon Valley, too, just because it got so bad that way. Yeah, I was like halfway through the second season. I was like, you know what is bad? It's doing bad things to women characters. Ugh. I'm sorry. So we got a nice voicemail. OK. And <laughs> I'll play that. She got cut off before she could say her name, but thank you for leaving us this. Here's the segment. Hi, ladies. Thank you for leaving your number. Um, I listened to your podcast again today, your latest one. I loved it. And I agree with another member who says that uh, your laughter is vastly entertaining. It really cheers me up. That's nice when people tell us that. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. So let's talk about the comments of the week. Uh, speaking of Ben Affleck, <laughs> that steroidy motherfucker. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> steroidy motherfucker. <laughs> Sorry, Rhiannon. <laughs> you keep making fun. Uh, my comment of the week is from Martina on the post about Ben and Anna de Armas going to a Black Lives Matter protest in Venice, California. And Martina says, the last time Ben was concerned with Black Lives, he was trying to get his slave owning family history removed from a TV show. That was a good callback. I liked that. It was. I, I hate when people come up with stuff I should have thought of. <laughs> I'm going to give her credit for that. <laughs> no, it was a really good callback. It was very cleverly it done was. in one sentence. Yeah, excellent. Um, I had two comments of the week because I wanted to just mention both of these stories because they were funny to me. Okay. One of my comments of the week was from the, are, are the Middleton secretly pot dealers? <laughs> Is party pieces a front for a pot farm? If that story is true, then how awesome would that be? You know they'd never spend a day in prison, but how awesome would that be? Well, you notice there's no follow-up story about any arrests being made. <laughs> you notice, right? Who owns that land? Who, who, owns that who land? knows? We'll probably never find out. Anyway, Crowdhood said, well, 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 how the turntables. <laughs> <laughs> Which I just thought was cheesy and funny. Apparently, it's from The Office. <laughs> oh, okay. I like that. I haven't heard that one. <laughs> and then my other <laughs> comment of the week was from that absolute moronic Meghan McCain story about how she was <laughs> talking about how New York looked like a war zone, except she's been sitting her ass in Virginia through all of her guns the entire time, and she was just talking about the news coverage, about how New York looked like a war zone. Her neighborhood was terrible. It was being devastated. And so Agnes said, I'm six months pregnant is the new, do you even know who my father is? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> it's gonna change time seven. I'm eight. I'm not. I got a newborn baby. She'll change her explanation. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you for listening, bitches. Thanks, bitches. Thank you for listening to the Celebrity Podcast. Please rate, review, and subscribe wherever you listen. If you like us, please turn off your ad blocker when you visit our site. You can text us or leave a voicemail at 434-218-3219. Our music is from AA Alto, Maiden, and via Premium Beat and Sound of Picture. Thanks again.